Hi everyone, in this lesson I want to look at an application involving quadratic equations. And this problem uh, is about a falling object. Now in every sort of uh, word problem, the most important thing uh, to first come to understand is what do the variables represent and to clearly identify your variables. Now in this problem they give us a formula and I need to understand what the uh, letters in this formula represent. In this particular case, the S right here represents the distance that an object falls. Now this is a formula that's uh, from physics, and you wouldn't necessarily know that unless you read this in your, in your book, but uh, that's the most important part of understanding uh, how to solve a word problem, is, is you have to be sure you're clear on what the variables represent in any formula that you have to come up with or that you are given. In this case, the t, this is the time in seconds, And the V0, that is your initial velocity. Okay, so I want to have those clearly in mind, and then there's another T here, but that's just the time in seconds again. So the first part of this problem says a ring is dropped from a helicopter at an altitude of 75 meters. So in this case, it tells me that, that tells me a distance, all right? And the question is, uh, approximately how long does it take to reach the ground? So uh, when it says how long, one of the question is how long does it take to reach the ground, then that's saying find time, right? So, so this means find t. And that means if I have t, I'm going to have to know what my initial velocity is and what my distance is. So in this case, uh, it tells me that it's dropped from an altitude of 75 meters. So that's a distance. It's going to fall 75 meters. All right, I'm looking for t up here. That's what it asked for. And, and I need that initial velocity. Well, that's hidden in this information right here because it says a ring is dropped. And if it's dropped, that means that, that the initial velocity is zero. So the dropped implies that your initial velocity is equal to zero. So what I have is this formula. I've got 4.9t squared plus zero times t equals 75. So all I really had to do is read very carefully and plug the numbers into the formula, and then I can solve this equation, right? 4.9t squared equals 75. I could do this one of two ways. I could bring the 75 on this side and, and plug it into the quadratic formula, or since there's no middle term, I could go ahead and just divide both sides by 4.9 and extract the square roots. So this would give me that t squared is whatever 75 divided by 4.9 is. Let's do that on my calculator. Uh, 75 divided by 4.9 would be about 15.3, blah, blah, blah. And so my t is going to be the square root. Technically, plus or minus the square root, but of course, the negative root uh, isn't going to be a, a player for us in this answer. OK? So that's going to be on my calculator here. If I take the square root of that answer, looks like I didn't need that parenthesis there about 3.91 seconds. All right, so we'll just say, we'll, we'll change this into a wavy equal sign. About 3.91 seconds is how long it would take for that object to reach the ground. All right, so that's part A. Now in part B, part B says a coin is tossed downward with an initial velocity of 30 meters per second. So in this case, now I have a, a, an initial velocity so if it's tossed downward and it has an initial velocity, so now I know my V0 is going to be 30, and it's from the same altitude, so I just plug it into the same form. I got 4.9t squared, uh, but this time I've got a, a 30t, that's my initial velocity, and I want to know uh, where that's going to equal the 75 meters that it's going to have to fall. 
So in this case, I would I would definitely want to bring the 75 over. Um, 4.9t squared plus 30t minus 75 equals 0. And you could do this by hand, plugging into the quadratic formula, or we can use our graphing calculator. Uh, we have this programmed in. Let me move this order ring C a little better. So let me uh, go to the program button, and I have programmed in here the quadratic formula. It'll ask me for a, b, and c. So a is 4.9. By the way, I do have a video showing how to program that into your calculator, so look for that. Uh, if you don't have it programmed in your calculator, my B value is 30, and my C value would be a negative 75. And out comes, oh, it gave me a uh, an approximation. Actually, it gave me a, a rational number for that. Not a very nice number. Let's figure out exactly what that is, because I really don't want a nasty fraction like that. that works out to be about 1.91 uh, seconds okay so I'll say T is approximately 1.91 seconds uh, or what was the other one we had about negative 8.03 seconds and I'll just say by the quad program here now obviously the negative one um, that's not going to have any meaning for this problem so uh, this is the one I want. I'll circle this one about 1.91 seconds and so by by tossing it down obviously it's going to hit the ground sooner right and that's exactly what we found out. Let's move on to part C here. Part C says that approximately how far will an object fall? Oh well now this is different. How far? This is asking us for S isn't it? Uh, in two seconds so there's my time. If it's thrown downward, an initial velocity of, of 20 meters per second. Okay, so, so now I have initial velocity of 20 meters per second. So I have this formula. I've got 4.9 uh, t squared uh, plus the v0t. Now in this case, the v0 they told me was 20. And I'm looking for s, right? I'm looking for how far. And they told me that the time is 2 seconds. So 4.9 times the 2 squared plus 20 times the 2. That's going to tell me how far it's going to go. So my s value is going to be, let's do this again on my calculator just so I don't make a mistake in my head or something like that. Uh, that'll be 4.9 times 4. 2 squared is 4. I can do that in my head. Uh, plus 40. Uh, 20 times 2 is 4, about 59.6, and that is in meters, I believe. Okay, so we would expect that it would go about almost 60 meters if you uh, uh, throw it down. And notice that's that's um, that's sort of reasonable in terms of my other answers that I had up here, right? If you throw it down at 20 meters, not quite as fast that you're throwing it down. Um, and uh, the two seconds, what we figure is just about two seconds in this one, right? That it went 75 uh, meters, uh, but it, it was it had been thrown down faster. So if you throw it down a little bit slower, we would expect that it, it would go a little bit less than that. Okay, a little bit less than the 75 meters for part B there. Okay.